Hi, this video will take you through the development of your photo narrative task. So here we're going to look at two notable Australian photographers, and that being Tracy Moffat. And so these works are from the Something More from 1989 uh, series of artworks. And also we could be looking at Trent Park. This is from the Seventh Wave series of artwork. So when photographers are exhibiting their work, they'll generally have some sort of narrative or theme that's sort of showcasing or focused upon that exhibition. And so we can see some great works here. And there's obviously a similar subject matter and also the photography technique in Trent uh, Park's case, often shooting black and white. So to get started and setting up our document, we want to go into Photoshop and we're going to create a document similar to this. And so I'm going to go File New and we want to be selecting an A3 document. So you might need to find that under Print, then View All Presets, then A3. Portrait or Landscape, we can always rotate that a little bit later. So I'll just let it um, with the, the original preset. We do want to print these out, so CMYK is going to be the most suitable. And most importantly, make sure you have the background as transparent and then select Create. And this is our A3 page. The checker pattern that we can see there, uh, that won't print. That's just to identify that it is transparent and not white. Now please go to Into Teams and go to the Narrative task and then be downloading Narrative Photoshop Template. So I'll download that. Now moving back to Photoshop, I'm then going to import that. So I'm going to go File, and then down to Place Embedded, and then find that document. So it's going to be my photo in my downloads, and then be selecting Place. And that's going to place it in here. This is just a preset, so we all have the same overall template. And so if your photograph um, narrative is going to be made up of eight cells, you're going to be using this one on the left-hand side, if it's nine cells, and also if it's ten cells. So you're not doing all three, you're just selecting one and telling your narrative over that one. Now what we can do is we want to expand one of these so it fills... Um, obviously the page. So I'm just going to drag that up to the very top and it should snap and drag this one down to the very bottom. Uh, whoops, I've extended a bit too far there to the bottom. And so if I'm using this nine cell narrative, I'm going to be selecting that one. And if I'm using the eight one, I'm just going to drag it to there. This is just so we have, as I said, like cohesion with the overall presentation for everyone's work. Now notice this is going to be set up so we're taking our shots in portrait um, if we're wanting them to be in landscape. I'm just going to go to image and then rotate image 90 degrees. And so therefore if all our shots are going to be in landscape it's going to be set up that way. It's going to be best, well it is essential that all the shots are taken on the same orientation, so all portrait, all, all landscape, it's going to look a little bit funny otherwise. Now what we want to do is go over to layers, and then we're just going to want to lock this layer, so then we cannot um, place anything upon that layer. And so when you start to drag in your files, you want to be placing them below uh, this layer. Now you should have taken between probably 40 and 50 shots. So if I'm doing eight cells or nine cells in this case, uh, I'll probably want two, sh two or three shots for each cell. So there we've already got you know, 35, 40 shots there. Um, and so then be manipulating each image on a separate document. So we have file new or simply open up that file and be manipulating it here before bringing it back and then placing it in here. That will just limit, I guess, potentially this image crashing because we want to be processing it, you know, at a, a regular sort of standard or interval rather than processing it all on one document. It's going to be best if it's processed over eight documents uh, and we're going to have more control. Another thing we want to see is obviously 
potentially the same angle from each shot or there's some sort of cohesion there's some sort of sequence that's guiding us through these eight to ten shots so it might be going that all the images are grayscale or potentially they're all color or there's this gradual effect where it goes from grayscale to color um, shot sizes obviously we can fix in terms of just zooming in and out and so if something that's really needs to be highlighted within one of these shots make sure you enlarge it and make sure that fills up that scene so it's most visible you're trying to tell a story without any text so make it the clarity is really really important make sure you're also documenting this process within your uh, powerpoint presentation um, and as you're proceeding before uh, i guess using photoshop and all its filters and effects that you're going to be applying where it takes a long time it's going to be best just to show a teacher another student or a family member see if they understand uh, what is happening across this narrative and if not you might need to adjust the photo or potentially include another photo um, or potentially even remove one to remove any confusion okay all the best thank you very much